Welcome to Dark Knight Films Reviews and Action Movie Night. Tonight I will be reviewing Cobra, released in 1986. Cobra stars Sylvester Stallone, Bridget Nielsen, Brian Thompson, Andrew Robinson, Rennie Santoni, Lee Garlington, Art LaFleur, Marco Rodriguez, David Rash, and Val Avery. Cobra was directed by George P. Cosmatos. Now, the way that this film came about is a very interesting story. Sylvester Stallone was originally intended to be Axel in the Beverly Hills Cop first movie. But Stallone took it upon himself to rewrite the entire script, pretty much removing any comedic elements because he didn't he wanted it to fit his style. So he made it more of a big action film. Paramount, <laughs> as soon as they read the script, they immediately rejected it due to the fact that it would have blew the budget way over what they wanted to spend on that film. So Stallone was out and they ended up getting Eddie Murphy to play the role. But Stallone didn't give up on taking the idea of this version of Axel, so he retitled him Marion Cobretti, and then he took elements from a novel called The Running Duck, written by Paula Gosling, and he loosely based it on that story, which has also been published under the title Fair Game. And that book was also adapted into a, another feature in 1995 under the title Fair Game, starring Cindy Crawford and William Baldwin. Basically, the elements of this group trying to kill the girl and the badass detective, you know, stepping in and uh, defending her and protecting her from them is from that. The character of Cobretti that Stallone plays in this was basically his what he wanted his version of Axel Foley to be. But it works. And I'm really glad that he didn't give up on that story and he went ahead and, you know, took his idea of what he wanted Beverly Hills Cop to be and made, you know, Cobra happen. And having a big action director such as George P. Cosmatos directing this, I mean, he makes the action sequences Pretty fucking cool in this. Um, uh, George had directed Rambo 2 before this. Um, or Rambo First Blood Part 2, whatever you want to call it. Um, and uh, uh, later on, he ended up uh, directing Tombstone. So he's got the action accolades to his name. So you will probably... I uh, hear uh, George's name um, in a few more of my reviews down the road. Bridget Nielsen plays the character of Ingrid Knudsen in this, and she is... This is probably the most beautiful Bridget has been in film, um, other than maybe Red Sonia. Do you have a life preserver? What? Your french fry is drowning now. But she's not the best of actresses. 
unfortunately. Um, but she, she works okay in this film. Um, and Brian Thompson as the Night Slasher is pretty fucking incredible. He is a total badass. And more than a match for Stallone to where whenever they get in that final fight at the very end. The court is civilized, isn't it? Pig. It is epic. But I'm not. This is where the law stops. And I start. Joining Stallone in defending um, Ingrid, um, we have Rene Santoni, who had already played alongside Clint Eastwood as Dirty Harry. And he played with Sean Penn in Bad Boys. So he already had the accolades of, hey, I'm working with some pretty big names here, you know. Um, and in this, he is really good as uh, Sergeant Tony Gonzalez. Um, very likable, just like he was in Dirty Harry. Um, I really liked his character in this. Um, Lee Garlington plays uh, Nancy Stalk, and she... Spoiler alert, if you have not seen this film, go watch it, and then come back and watch this review, okay? Alright. Now, on to the spoiler. Um, she's revealed to be the lover of Brian Thompson's Night Slasher. And she's the mole within the police department letting them know certain things and that they need to know. So, and she was really good in this. I, I, you know, you really love to hate her in this. She, she did a good job making you um, hate her character. So, good job. Good job on her part. And then you have Andrew Robinson as Detective Monty. And he, as usual, mo most movies... He has, is playing a sleazy or asshole kind of a character. And in this, he's pretty much an asshole. Um, he is the detective who thinks he knows what's best and he can get things done without violence and without any wrecking the city the way that <laughs> Cobretti does in this film. Nobody asked you money. Well, that's just too bad, isn't it? Come on, let's face it. He doesn't give a rat's ass for this girl. She's just another piece of live bait, so King Cabretti here can cut a new notch. And uh, they clash heads several times in this thing. And, uh... Um... It's, it's just great uh, seeing Stallone work off of Robinson because, they, I mean, he's just such a great actor. So, these two awesome actors working off of each other in these scenes just works so well. You've already caused a lot of people to die. How about letting her live? <laughs> um, Art LaFleur plays Captain Sears and he, as usual, I mean this guy was a great character actor. He is just great playing this role. And then we have uh, Marco Rodriguez who, um, another great character actor, he's in the opening scene as the supermarket killer um, that Cobretti encounters um, in the opening moments of the film. Your disease, and I'm the cure. Die! <laughs> and it's thanks to his great, crazy, wild-eyed villainous a little portrayal there as this weird crazy psycho dude um it sets everything in motion for what we are going to expect out of stallone in this film and if it wasn't for marco rodriguez's great performance here i don't think that would have worked as well as intended so props to him on his performance there 
in that one little scene. He really did steal the show for that little time that he had in the opening. And then there's David Rash as uh, Dan, um, Ingrid's boss. He's not in there for much, but he's in there just enough to uh, make you realize, if you're as old as I am, um, that uh, Sledgehammer is in this film. So I really like the kick-ass action 80s vibe of this film. Um, and Stallone, apparently, um, really liked um, the music of uh, Robert Tepper and John Cafferty because <laughs> he had John Cafferty do the end credit song Voice of America Sons for this and he had Robert Tepper do the Angel of the City song um, which was used a lot during um, Ingrid's modeling scenes and everything so um, and although I do not think that the, these, these particular Robert Tapper and John Cafferty songs are as good as the ones that were featured in Rocky IV, it's still cool that they are in another Stallone film, even though the songs aren't as good, but they're still good songs. Um, but out of the films that have been made based on the novel A Running Duck, or in some places being published as Fair Game, I think, even though this is more loosely based on that story, I think Cobra is the better adaptation of it. Um, I mean, number one, well, yeah, yeah. the comparisons between the, the, the leading ladies, I mean, uh, Bridget Nielsen versus uh, Cindy Crawford, um, it's, it's, there's not much difference. I mean, neither one of them were really that great of actresses. So, um, but, we get a big winner here on Cobra because, I mean, uh, there's no way Stallone loses to William Baldwin. Sorry. That is 100% in favor of Stallone. All right. So my final rating of Cobra from 1986. I will give this film a 10 out of 10. This is, in my opinion, one of Sylvester Stallone's best films outside of the Rocky and Rambo franchise. And I think his character of Lieutenant Marion Cobretti is right up there with Balboa and Rambo. But what do you guys think? Do you agree with my review? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments down below why you may disagree or you agree with me. Let me know. Anyway, if you like this video, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe because it really does help this channel out a lot. All right. Well, tomorrow will be video game night, and I hope you will join me then. But thanks for watching.